In 2014, it was reported that the 1999 movie Varsity Blues actually paid half a million dollars to use the song Thunderstruck by the band ACDC. The payment is called Synchronization Fee or Sync Fees. Sync Fees are paid for the use of a copyrighted music in movies, TV shows, video games, and advertisements. If ACDC charged half a million for their song, how much did BTS, Jimin, Blackpink, Red Velvet, and other K-pop idols earn from their songs being included in Hollywood movies. I haven't seen their checks, but we can have a pretty good estimate based on available information shared by industry experts such as Ari Herstad and ASCAP itself or the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, and my own experience and knowledge. The links to their articles and websites are in the description box. I'm also going to sit down for an interview with a sync agent real soon. Hi! If you do end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe and hit that notification button so that you know when a new video is coming out. Also, share the video because that really helps. Okay, how much did Jimin, Blackpink, BTS, Red Velvet, Big Bang, TVXQ, Girls' Generation, so many of them, Asian artists, how much do they earn whenever their song is getting used by a Hollywood movie or a Hollywood TV show? Disclaimer, I will not be giving you the exact amount of how much they earned. I've never seen their check. What I can give you is a range. There is a standard fee for um, how much uh, for how much a movie will pay for a certain song, for the use of a certain song. So there are, of course, rates depending on the name of the artist. So I'll give you those ranges, the lower range, the middle, and then the higher range. And then you can sort of compute from there. And then there's the upfront fee, and of course, there's the residuals. Okay, so if that's uh, okay with you, proceed. But if that's not what you're expecting, then uh, you know what to do. Fees for motion picture music is paid based on the different ways the song is used, how the song was created, and the name of the artist that performed the song. Types of motion picture music. Movie music could be one of the three. The underscore, pre-existing song, and songs written specifically for the movie. Each is negotiated and paid for differently, but since most Asian songs used in motion pictures in America are pre-existing hits or pre-existing songs, that is what I will be concentrating on. The standard upfront fee for a song is 15 and 60 grand, with majority ranging from 20 grand to 45 grand, according to ASCAP. Based on experience and more importantly, artists that have been doing this for a long time, Upfront sync fees for indie artists for movies, according to them, are 10 grand to 80 grand for films, 10 grand to 80 grand for trailers, and 5 grand to 10 grand for theme songs. That is just the upfront fee, and this is mostly applied to indie artists and artists that are not so popular. The stature of the artist plays a big part. For example, when RM did Fantastic for Fantastic Four back in 2015, he wasn't as popular internationally as when Dynamite was used by the movie Clifford the Big Red Dog in 2021, and when Fire was used by John Cena's Playing with Fire, and when Jimin's Friends was used by The Eternals. Blackpink was also not as popular as when As If It's Your Last was used in Justice League in 2017, as when How You Like That was used by Hotel Transylvania 4 in 2022. So you can safely assume that their fee is higher than the standard fee in the US when their songs were used post-2000. Another thing is the residuals. The artist will get paid for each time the movie is played. The rates vary when it's a theatrical release and when it's straight to streaming. Straight to streaming usually pays lower. Other considerations. Aside from the stature of the song and the singer, the fee could also go up or down depending on the following. How the song is used. Is it going to be performed by an actor on camera or they will just use the instruments with no background vocals or just the vocal with no instruments? The overall budget for the film as well as the music budget will of course affect the fee. The type of the film. Major studio movies pay more, of course, versus independently produced movies. 
Next, the duration of the use. Is there going to be just a 5-second use or 10 seconds or 30 seconds or the whole song? Next is the territory of the license. RM's Fantastic, for example, was used for Fantastic Four's Korean release. The guarantee that the song is going to be used in the film's soundtrack album will also affect the fee. How You Like That and As If It's Your Last by Blackpink were both used in the movie but not included in the official soundtrack. The Use of a Master If the film requests for the master recordings to use it in the film, record companies will charge between 15 grand to 70 grand. Again, this could go lower or higher depending on the popularity of the artist and how it is going to be used. For those of you who don't know, the master is the original recording of the song with all the elements like the instruments, vocals, and all of those stuff separated. Giving someone the master allows them to use specific elements only instead of the whole bit. For example, they could use the guitar riff only or even just the voice, a cappella. Opening and closing credits. Since the opening credits set the mood of the film, it is considered more important than other songs used as a background. The fees by publishers are almost always higher than other music used in the film. It could go between 30 grand to 65 grand. However, if the artist who performed the song is popular, then it could go way higher. If the song is played in the ending credits, it could also be paid higher. Songs that are played in the end are usually intended to be included in the soundtrack. Movie Trailers and Promo The sync fee allows the movie to use the music in any part of the film. However, if it's going to be used for any other purpose such as marketing, trailer, other promotions, then that is an additional fee. Multiple Scenes if a movie uses a song more than once in a movie, then the fee will be higher. For example, they use it in the end credits, and then they use it again in the body of the film, maybe once or twice, then the fee will be higher. If the song also becomes an integral part of the story, then the fee will even be higher. As an example, there's the movie That Thing You Do, Dirty Dancing, and Grease. Changes in the lyrics. Changes in the lyrics. So if the movie changes the lyrics, this would require an approval process. Usually the publisher, the management company, the artist itself would ask for the script, the treatment of the scene, the actual changes that will, made, will be made in the, in, in the lyrics, who is going to make it, and then it will be deliberated. And of course, that would require ad an additional fee. And this applies even if it's just a small change in the lyrics. So, for example, in the scene, there's this one character in the movie that's just singing out of the blue and decide to change a word or two words in the song that would still require an approval process. And as I've said, that's an additional fee. Duration of license. It's usually in perpetuity and anywhere in the universe. Yes, that's the actual term they use in the contract in perpetuity anywhere in the universe. They probably know that there are aliens and habitable planets. This is a good source of income for many musicians. It's a special bonus if they get picked as a theme song for a regular series. It's great for their income and, of course, great for their exposure and reputation. Hootie and the Blowfish hit it big with I'll Be There For You for the TV show Friends. There's Remy Zero Save Me for the TV show Smallville. Paula Cole's I Don't Wanna Wait for Dawson's Creek. All the songs secure them for life. So, the next question is, how do musicians get their songs to movies or TV shows? And can we help get the songs of our favorite groups or artists to become a part of a movie or become a theme song of a show? Music Sync Ari Herstan got his song on One Tree Hill by tweeting it to the music supervisor of the show. Music supervisors don't take songs from songwriters anymore, unfortunately, because they get inundated by songs day in and day out, people sending it to them directly. But they can't just accept them even if it is the perfect song for their movie or TV show. 
because of legalities just because you independently release a song on spotify you may not actually have the sync rights for it and if the music supervisor can't be one million percent sure that the song they are placing in their movie or show won't get their production company and the network sued they won't use the song so they work with sync agents Sync agents sometimes work at sync licensing companies and sometimes they just do their work independently. Music supervisors don't have to worry about sync agents sending them things that are not 100% cleared legally. Sync agents know how to make sure everything is completely legally cleared. So if you want to help your favorite idol or favorite group or favorite artist to get their songs in a movie or a TV show, you need to get in touch with a sync agent. But as a fan, you can only call their attention. Bulk of the work will still be done by the publisher of the idol or the artist or the group. For SB19, for example, the publisher is 1Z Entertainment because they now own their music. Now, for songs like Friends, Dynamite, mic drop and most other k-pop songs most of the time it was the movie's music supervisor who actually picked them and put them in the roster so obviously there are still some exceptions but very rare okay i've mentioned some k-pop songs that have been used by hollywood movies there's of course friends by bts's jimin and v there's fire dynamite mic drop Blackpink has As You Like It, How You Like That, Psy, of course, the original TVXQ had Rising Sun included in Fast and the Furious Part 4, Big Bang had one, Girls' Generation, there's so many of them. But it seems that Friends by Jimin and V, performed by uh, Jimin and V, they, it seems to be the winner because number one, there's re very few songwriters compared to other songs. Number two, there's only two performers. The only thing that could change that is if in the deal that BTS has, they get paid for any performance or any income that is derived from uh, a group album. But if not, then it would just be... Uh, Jimin is actually both a producer and songwriter, and then the other performer is V. Also... Eternals is a huge movie. It has a huge budget. And of course, it did pretty well in the box office. So that that's a high-budget film. And of course, it was the director that approached Big Hit for the song. It wasn't the other way around. It wasn't offered to her. She was the one who sought out the song. So it seems to be the big winner. Now, there's, um, there's of course, the income from residuals. But when it... When it's actually a straight-to-streaming show or movie, it pays lesser. I'm sure you know of the writer's strike, the actor's strike, and all this issue about residuals. They really pay less. It's movie releases pay more in residuals. And then after that, they also get released in streaming services and stuff. So, yeah. So, it seems that Friends is the biggest winner. Um but yeah, it's uh, it's pre it's it could be lucrative for many performers, and it's especially lucrative if the performers are also the songwriters and part of the production team. All right, I hope you found that interesting. <laughs> Let me know if you have comments, questions, clarifications, uh, corrections. Leave them in the comment section below. Again, you can say anything that you want to say. Just be always be respectful. And um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. And of course, you can always get in touch with me in any of the social media links that you see on your screen right now. A lot of you do, actually, and I'm so happy for it. I try to answer all of them. All right, thank you. I appreciate you being here. Till next time.